the concussion itself and still this day is not the problem. It is about care. Okay, there's a lot of things that umbrella care and people could get confused by this. Listen, and, and to give a, a, a perspective, the leading cause of head trauma in the entire country is tripping and falling. The environment where that's probably going to happen, the most dangerous environment where that is probably going to happen is in your home. Now, unless you have protocols and equipment in your home, well, your home is a much more dangerous place than sports are today because of protocols that are in place. Now, as far as they're executed, so I go back to what happened to me. What happened to me was a failure in care. I had a a major head trauma on a Monday night in Kansas City. Now, here's the two signs of severity of head trauma, which are always misunderstood. I didn't lose consciousness, but losing consciousness is not a sign of severity. It's just a symptom of head trauma. And the reason and best way to understand that is once you regain consciousness, is losing consciousness um, a symbol, a sign anymore? No, it, it, you now have regained consciousness, so that's not a sign anymore. So how do we evaluate how severe you are? Cognitive recall and stability. Those are the two most important. And now there's a lot in cognitive recall and there's a lot in stability. Um, remember they used to go, hey, how many fingers? Okay, so now there's a whole battery of things because you got retrograde, anterior grade and retrograde learning, the bright lane, left, right, you know, eyes, you know, so there's a whole scope of things you need to go through from the cognitive and a whole slew of things from the physical. And those can be rehabbed and repaired and done properly, evaluated properly. Then you can return in a much safer environment than when you left it. Um, It's when we return too quick or we don't remove ourselves quick enough. That is where our danger lies still today. Now, back then, clearly, you, you mentioned it. As a player, we had no idea about it. It's not what we had today. However, in 1994, it was still archaic to be cleared over the phone. Like, there's nobody that would have had knee surgery, and the orthopedic doctor would have called up and said, hey, how's your knee doing? Go ahead and play. And that's basically what they did in the Kansas City game. Listen, I didn't know who I was or where I was for about 8 to 10 hours. Cognitive recall, as far as that time frame, that's significant. That's major, major trauma. That's severe. Shoot, by the time I got home into Chicago, I went and got an MRI. They lost me in the hospital, by the way, because I'd wandered up um, a couple floors. I was sitting in um, in a waiting room waiting for them to find me. And it took them almost an hour to find me. They didn't realize that I'd wandered off. So I was experiencing those things, you know, three, four, five, six hours later. They had to give me a ride. You know, Eric Kramer took me home off the plane. Um, they picked me up and brought me into the office. So that tells you that it's severe right there. So to get cleared over the phone five days later is just archaic. And that's ultimately what happened. I, and then I returned to play. I had a headache. I didn't. Well, I felt terrible. But I was just asked, hey, how do you feel? Now, my headache back then, I didn't even put two and two together. Um, and, nor should I. Um, you know, nowadays, you you talk about all, you throw all these things out to, to players and help them understand what's this isn't a headache. If you if you feel slow, lethargic, you know all these things, you know, giving you things to think about that you might you know have bypassed. So we didn't have that. But my go back to getting cleared over the phone was just archaic. Um, that never happened before, um, and I shouldn't have been back on a football field. And when I when I sustained uh, severe uh, concussion again later, about like five weeks later, I went into cardiac arrest when I got in the locker room. Um, in, a, in the process of them doing, starting to do CPR on me, I actually started to breathe, and I actually walked to the ambulance. But I was in intensive care for days. Um, I learned how to learn how to read again. I went through severe depression. Three was over. Um, I had no hope. I had no purpose. Um, I was an utter mess and a train wreck. You know that's why I, I talk about mental health and aspects of it. I'm working on a a new book called ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, which we talk about emotional trauma is a bigger issue than physical trauma. And those things get confused. Symptoms can be very similar, but emotional trauma is a bigger issue in this country than uh, physical trauma. And if you're going to rectify yourself, and this is about 99% true, there's always those unique cases where medication is the pri- going to be the primary thing that helps you. But in most cases, it is about 
emotion, I mean, mental, your mental health starts with you. Okay. Like I, I was laying on a couch. I had no personal hope. I had people calling me, leaving messages, trying to stop by the house. And it wasn't until I got up off the couch and realized I got to change things and I got to start doing things and I got to quit pointing fingers, casting blame and making excuses. The second I did that, that is when things changed for me. And in most cases, that's the responsibility everybody has. Now, I'm not saying I did that and everything worked out all right. It was a five-year journey. And there was a lot of things that, and people that helped me on the way, which you do need help on the way, but you have to take ownership of it to start it. And if you do that, that is when your progress will start and that is when things will change. And that is when you will start to get better. Then you can get the help and hope that, that you're looking for. But if you never make the initial effort, if you do not make the initial steps, nobody can do it for you. And that's a critical step for, for everybody. And um, some of the best ways to evaluate how you are is just look at your overall routine. You know, um, there's three thirds to perfect health, nutrition, exercise, activity, you know, you can put workplace in there, you know, that's and rest. And if you look at that into your routine of your day, you could probably find out where you have some ruts, where you struggle. Every human being probably could find that out. You know, rest is a really big deal. You know, if you're, say, working out right and eating right, but you're not getting any rest, and that can tear away at your at your life, you know, regardless of how healthy you think you are by your nutrition and, and, and your exercise. Are you exercising? Is there activities? What kind of things are you doing, you know, that make you and help you from um, a mental and cognitive aspect? You know, what kind of foods are you putting into your body? You know, all of those things, if you really evaluate, you could probably find out a majority of your issues. Now, are you willing to change and adjust and make the changes to change those things and to help you? Um, it goes back to you again. And so um, that's the one thing we're um, in a nutshell doing with this book is trying to help people help themselves, give them things that will help them understand maybe why they do what they do, and then tools to help them work through that and navigate out of that into a healthier space.